Hi guys, I'm Jesse at Stropro.com and today I'm showing you the new X35 flash. This flash is the smaller brother of the X60 flash. It may look smaller, but it's got all the features of this guy packed into the smaller body here. So you might be wondering, why do I need a smaller flash? Well, if you shoot mirrorless like me, and I've got the X-T2 here, this older X-60 is still a fantastic flash, great off camera and stuff, but if you ever wanna use it on camera, it gets pretty big and heavy. So if I just slide this guy into the X-T2 here, you'll see that flash is, you know, almost every bit as big as the camera. And when you're carrying that around all day in a wedding or an event or something, it kind of defeats the purpose of really having a mirrorless camera. So the X35 here, when we put that one on, is just a lot more convenient to carry around. Yes, you are losing some power, but for an on-camera flash, what this is really designed for, it really, you know, doesn't matter. You don't need all that power on camera usually. So you can see the comparison there between the two. Uh, if I turn it to the side, just what a size difference that that is. Now the cool thing about the X35 is it still has all the features. This is still a full TTL flash. You still have high speed sync up to one eight thousandth of a second. And we make this one in Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sony, Olympus, and Panasonic. So full TTL or automatic capability for your camera. The one of the differences you're gonna see in the body of it here, when we take this off, you're only gonna have two batteries instead of the standard four in the X60. So a little bit less battery life, but it's also dumping a lot less power. This is a 60 guide number, this is a 35. Um, but still very capable. I'm gonna bring Kevin in now. He's gonna show you all the features, how to hook this up to the controller because the other nice thing about this flash is that it still works off camera with our X-Series lights. So our X60 uh, speed lights, our X600s, X200s, anything with an X in a name, it's gonna work with it and you can use it in master mode there. So here's Kevin, he'll show you all about that right now. Hi guys, so I'm going to show you three different ways to use the X35. Uh, we'll start with the on-camera functions, and then I will move on to using it as a master flash, and then lastly as a slave flash, all within the uh, remote system. So turning on the X35 flash here, you're going to see, uh, by default, it's going to be in TTL mode. Now, TTL is quite useful uh, in any scenario where you can't control the environment because it's going to send out a little pre-flash that your camera measures. Based on your camera's light meter, you could also get a different result. Um, so it could take a bit of practice still, but um, for the most part, it's gonna give you a good automatic exposure. Uh, if I go to the control wheel here and hit the set button, I can uh, do flash exposure compensation. So in TTL mode, if I, was, if I was to set this to plus one, what that's telling the flash to do is to take that reading that um, automatic reading and then boost it by plus one exposure value so one stop and uh, you can go all the way up to plus three or if you want to tell it to shoot a little darker you can go into the negatives all the way down to negative three exposure value i'll just bring that back to zero uh, so moving on uh, if we want to take this to manual mode i can hit the mode dial here and then we're gonna have the power expressed as a fraction. It goes from one over one at full power. And all I have to do is move the control dial in this mode to change it all the way down to one one twenty eighth power. So that's an eight F stop range. Uh, the final mode is the multi burst mode. You're probably not likely to use this very often. It's a bit, it's a bit niche, uh, but what this can do is send out multiple flashes in one frame. So if you're using your camera in your bulb mode and you want it to freeze someone in multiple spots as they move through your frame, this would be the mode to do that in. And uh, if I hit the set button, I can adjust the Hertz. So this is the number of flashes per second. So that's the rate. And then if I hit the set button again, I'm adjusting the number of flashes. And this could be limited depending on the power you've chosen. 
but I could do 30 flashes at, let's say, 10 hertz, and I'll hit the test button so you can see what that looks like. So, a fun feature, something you probably won't use too often, but it's there. Uh, moving on, uh, if we're in our TTL manual or multi-mode, uh, you can change the zoom of the flash, and what that is doing is adjusting the field of view. By default, it's going to say AU for auto. What that means is it's going to match the field of view uh, depending on which lens you have. So if I had a zoom lens mounted on this camera, I could uh, change the zoom and you would hear the motor working internally to keep matching the field of view with the flash. Uh, of course, if you're doing like a bounce, it's going to be a bit more guesswork. Uh, you might actually want something a little bit narrow as far as the zoom goes. Let's hit the zoom button. You can see we can adjust it here. So it's expressing it in millimeters. Um, I have this, this is the Fuji version. It's mounted on the X-T2. So uh, it's already um, giving me the millimeters for the APS-C size sensor. Uh, if you're using the Canon or Nikon one, you may have to apply crop factor if you're using an APS-C body because those ones will express it in full frame terms. But uh, yeah, for example, if I was gonna do a bit of a ceiling bounce, I might pick something close to the maximum, maybe this 53, because that's gonna shoot out a narrow cone, and then when that bounces back out, it's gonna fill out, and it's gonna give me more power. Next up, we have the sync button. Um, this is actually rarely gonna be used on camera. Uh, with most um, of the modern cameras, it's going to just automatically put this into high-speed sync if you pass your flash sync speed. Flash sync speed will vary depending on the camera. It's usually between 1 1 60th and 1 2 50th of a second, sometimes a bit faster, but yeah, uh, on this camera, the X-T2, if I go past my sync speed, it's automatically gonna put this in high-speed sync. Actually, you'll see with the camera turned off, uh, it's getting no feedback from the camera, so I can actually manually put high-speed sync on or off. Once I turn my camera on, you're gonna see that high-speed sync symbol come up. Uh, that's because it's having communication with the camera. Once this is off camera, uh, you may have to enable that high-speed sync um, if you're using it as a slave, but we'll go over that in a little bit. So you'll notice there's uh, some silver text below some of these buttons. Uh, that would be to access the secondary function of those buttons. So to access a secondary function, you're gonna long press the button. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna talk about the master slave modes. So that's that squiggly line symbol here below the sync. So you're gonna need to long press the sync button to access those. I'll hold that for a few seconds. And you should see a little radio beacon symbol flashing in the bottom left corner here. Once that's flashing, you can move the uh, set dial. You're gonna see an M option, that's for master, and an S option, that's for slave. So let's go over the master first. So that would be um, useful if I wanted to have a flash on camera, but still control other flashes. And this will allow me to control up to three groups of flashes, um, anything in our X series. And uh, I can also control the master flash, this one up here. So I can, tell, I can tell it even to turn off and not fire. So I can use this purely as a controller. Just gonna be useful in some scenarios where you need to be flexible. Um, so right now uh, it is in TTL mode in my M group. M group is master, so that's this flash. So if I wanted to change what it's doing, I'm just gonna hit the mode dial, mode button, sorry. And um, I've got manual, off. So manual, TTL, and off are the options in the master mode, regardless of which group you're controlling. Right now I'm controlling this guy. So if I were to take a shot uh, in manual, you'll see it'll fire. I can turn it off. Now it won't fire, but it's still sending the signal. If I wanna control my other flash groups, I'm going to hit this uh, slave button here and if I just short press that, it's gonna move on to the next group, which is A. So I can play with my A group here. Again, my options with the mode button are manual, off, TTL. 
So I can go back here, hit the slave button again, and I've got B and C groups available as well. So I guess uh, actually that's kind of the one exception to the silver text always being a secondary function. When I'm in the uh, master mode, you see group slash channel as the secondary functions. So uh, group in this mode is gonna be a short press, channel is gonna be a long press. The channel is gonna be set to one by default. Uh, unless you have a specific reason for changing it, you can pretty much just leave it there. It makes your life easier. The reason to change the channel would be, uh, say you were at, uh, in the same space with someone else using Stroke Pro gear, and you wanted to trigger your flashes and your flashes only, then it's useful to pick a second channel, or you can pick up to 32 channels actually. So it leaves you a lot of flexibility for working with other photographers in the same space. All right guys, so I'm just gonna give a very quick run through of how to um, pair an X60 flash with the X35 acting as a master. I'm gonna turn on the X60. This actually happens to be a X60N for Nikon. It actually does not matter. When you're controlling this as a slave, you can go cross brand and still retain all of the functions, TTL, high speed sync. Our system is very flexible that way. So I've turned on the X60. I'm going to hit the master slave function button here on the far right. So first I've got optical master. That's denoted by the lightning bolt symbol. This is optical slave. Now I'm in the radio master and radio slave. You see it's a slave there and then my group. So right now it is in channel one, which is again the default. We're just gonna leave it there just because we are not worried about interfering with anyone else's flashes. Uh, and I'm gonna leave this on group A as well to make our lives easy. Uh, so now if I go back here, I can switch uh, the group in the master mode to A and now I'm controlling this flash. If I dial the power up and down here, you'll see it reflected on the X60 when I press the test button. So here I'm at full power. And the X60 is at full power. Um, if I go back to my group here, I can go to M. This is in TTL right now. Let's disable it. So I hit the mode button twice. Now this is off. I will point it at you just to show you what I'm doing. And let's take a picture. So only the X60 flashed. So there's, it's pretty flexible the way you can use this. I can have this as a TTL bounce with this set up in the corners of my room. That can be a really useful thing to do at events. Um, yeah, so lots of options there. All right guys, so I went ahead and got the uh, XTF controller here on camera just so I can demonstrate how to use the X35 in its slave mode. So we're gonna come back to the X35. I'm gonna long press that sync button again to access the secondary function, which is the master slave mode selector. And I'm gonna see that tower flashing again. I'm gonna move it one more to the right and you'll see an S symbol come up for slave. I'll hit the set button to confirm that. By default, this is gonna be in group A, but you can change your groups again in the same way that you uh, change which group you are controlling in the master mode, except now you're choosing which group this flash will be. So it's in A right now. I can go B, C. Yeah, you choose uh, three flash groups on the X35. I'm just gonna leave this in A. Now, coming back to the uh, XTF controller, I'm gonna, you're gonna note uh, channel one in the top right. Make sure that's the same on here. Um, you can change that if you want for the reasons I already went over, but make sure you change it on both. And to change the channel on the X35, again, that's gonna be a long press on the slave button. And you'll see the channel flashing. Rotate the dial, and then again, hit the set button to confirm. So we're back at channel one. We're gonna stick with that. So on the XTF, I need to select the A group with the center button. There we are. Now, um, right now I'm seeing these dotted lines. That means that the A group is disabled. We wanna turn this on. So I'm going to hit the mode button. I can switch it into TTL. In TTL, I can hit the group button and do exposure compensation. 
In the same way I described at the beginning of this video, as if your, camera, as if your um, flash was on camera, except now it's off camera. You can still use the exposure compensation function. Let's just bring that back to zero. Now, uh, if I want to set this to a manual power, I can hit the mode button while highlighting the A group. Now I'm in manual. You'll see the power expressed as a fraction. So in the same way as I accessed exposure compensation in TTL mode, I will hit the group button here to change the power, except now I'm selecting a manual power. I can go all the way up to one over one, all the way down to one, 128. Actually, this is enabled for 1256 because our X602 can utilize 1256 power. But if you go below that uh, on this controller, this is just gonna stick at 1128 because that's its minimum. But um, let's set it to 164th just to demonstrate it. If I hit the test button here, you're seeing it's flashing at 164th. If I hit the shutter, same thing. So this is a very versatile flash. It's light enough to be used as a dedicated controller when it's on camera. But uh, if you need to get that little pop of light off camera, this is still a part of your radio system if you have the uh, controller. So don't be afraid to use it off camera. It does have a fair amount of power despite its size. <laughs> Last thing I wanna go through is just the custom functions. So you'll see this C function, and that is the secondary function of the zoom button. So again, we're gonna long press that to access the custom functions. First is the sleep mode. By default, the X35 will sleep after 30 seconds. Um, you can disable that if you want. It's uh, usually not too much of a problem because it will wake when you half press the shutter, but there is that kind of slight delay there, so you might want to turn this off. Um, otherwise, leave it on because it does save a bit of battery life. Next up in the custom functions is going to be the AF assist beam. So I'll actually just remove this for a second so you can see it. On the front here, there is actually an AF assist beam. Um, it just projects a little bit of a red beam, helps you focus in low light scenarios. So if you uh, go back into the custom functions, we can turn that on or off. Um, the reason to disable it would be uh, if you didn't want that to distract your subject or you were in a scenario where you didn't want to shine an ugly red light in someone's face. Otherwise, it's a pretty useful tool. You'll notice it backs me out of the custom functions pretty quickly, but I'll just go back in. Uh, next one here, backlight. So right now we've got a bit of an orange backlight. I can hit the set button, rotate the wheel, and turn that off if you want. Again, just a battery saving thing. Um, the backlight uh, might help you see it in a low light environment. Otherwise, you maybe don't need it, so you could turn that off. Back into the custom functions. I'll just turn that back on. Next up, now this is interesting. So uh, remember before how I told you that the uh, millimeters in the zoom is expressed in APS-C on this body? Well, that's the default. But if you would like, you can switch that back to full frame terms. On the Fuji camera, you probably wouldn't do that because you're just, then you're applying crop factor again. But uh, on, on the X35 for Canon, for example, like they have both APS-C and full frame bodies in their lineup. So it would make sense for you to select whichever one uh, applies to the camera that you're using. So APS-C mode on or off. I'll turn that back on. And that's actually it. Not too many custom functions on this guy, but uh, a few more ways you can enhance your experience with this flash. All right, guys, that was our overview of the X35 flash. It really is a beautiful flash to use on camera, and it just, it's so tiny, you can fit it in your bag so easily. It makes a great dedicated controller too, in my opinion, because sometimes you might just want a bit of a fill or catch light from camera. Super useful. Um, so anyway, yeah, I hope you guys found this helpful and thanks for watching. Until next time. Mm -hmm.